Okay, let's look at some examples of graphing tangent. Um, tangent and cotangent graphs, first of all, they don't have amplitude, so don't look for amplitude like you would sine and cosine graphs. Uh, let's just look at period length. Period length is pi divided by the number in front of the x, which is 2. Um, that's different than sine and cosine. Sine and cosine was 2 pi before it repeated. You know, these graphs have a period of pi units, smaller, before it repeats. So period length is pi over 2. Um, now here's how I'm going to do my x-axis. And it's up to you how to do yours, so this is how I'm going to do mine. Um, it takes three points between the asymptotes to plot the graph. So I like to have, um, I want to have enough boxes between the asymptotes so that I can put my three points down. So for tangent, since tangent has asymptote on either side of the y-axis, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to come over two boxes each side, and that's going to be vertical asymptotes. Now, since this length right here is pi over 2, that means I would have had to go pi over 4 and negative pi over 4. 1 fourth and 1 fourth is 1 half. Okay. Now, notice there are four boxes between them, so I'm going to go out four more boxes, and right here is the next one. Now, that mark is pi over 2 units from this one, pi over 4. So I have to think what's 1 fourth plus 1 half, and you get 3 fourths, 3 pi over 4. The same thing out here, 1, 2, 3, 4 boxes between them. And this is negative 3 pi over 4. Okay. Now, this graph is going to look exactly like the original tangent graph that I drew, except if you look carefully, the, the axes are just scaled differently. But essentially, they're the same graph. Um, OK, tangent graph. Once I've got the asymptotes in place, um, right halfway in the middle are zeros. Tangent is an increasing function. So I make sure that from left to right, it's going up. And it looks like this. Three periods. Okay, the next one. Well, let's just kind of show how to do it, maybe a little quicker. Period is pi divided by a half, which is 2 pi. So, on my graph, I'm going to set it up the same way. I'm going to come out two boxes, two boxes. There is my vertical asymptotes. Now, between these vertical asymptotes has to be a length of 2 pi. That means this is pi and negative pi. Go out four more boxes to where the next one's going to be. That's 2 pi from the first one, which puts it at 3 pi. And to the left puts it at negative 3 pi. Okay, now we said that tangents and cotangents, they don't have amplitude, um, but they can have this stretch factor. Okay, that can still apply, which is just not defined as amplitude anymore. Uh, well, halfway in the middle of the asymptotes is again the zero. It's still going to be increasing, uh, but instead of going negative 1, 1, it's going to stretch. It's going to be negative 3 and 3. All that that 3 does is stretches the points. It's going to look kind of more like this. Much kind of steeper near the x-axis. It doesn't flatten out as much as this one. OK, let's look at some examples of cotangent. Uh, for cotangent, again, I need period length. Period is pi divided by the number in front of the x, which in this case is 3. 
um, the asymptotes are different than the tangent asymptotes. Um, the y-axis is going to be an asymptote, okay? Which means if I go four boxes away, that's my first period length, and it's going to label as pi over three. Four more boxes away is another period. That's going to be another pi over three, so two pi over three. You can, of course, come this way, get negative pi over three, negative two pi over three. Okay, the cotangent graph, just like the tangent graph, zero in the middle. Cotangent typically falls from left to right. This one is negative, so it's gonna flip. So instead of coming down from left to right, it's gonna go up from left to right. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, this looks like a tangent graph. And it certainly does, in that it increases like the tangent graph does. The only difference is that the asymptotes are not in the right spot. Of course, we could horizontally translate the tangent graph to make it look like this anyway, so kind of like sine and cosine, if you just see a graph, it's hard to know if you're dealing with tangent or cotangent. Okay, one more, just for good measure. Um, period length here is pi divided by two. That two is that two. Um, I'm gonna go out four boxes for my first asymptote. That's at pi over two. I'm gonna go out four more boxes for my next one. That is another pi over two away, so that's at pi. And get the same thing out here to the left. Uh, the two, again, is not amplitude, but it's a stretch factor. Um, let's see, zero's in the middle. This graph's gonna fall from left to right because it's positive, so it's gonna do what cotangent should do, which is decrease. It's gonna stretch to two and negative two. Um, I typically require on your homework that you show at least two periods. That's two periods, okay? Um, often though, if you're gonna spend the time to set up the graph and plot all these points, it's not much more work to just fill in the whole graph.